Hi, you are looking at everything you need to build an ErgoDox mechanical keyboard. This is an open source project and you can learn more about it by going to their website at ergodox.org. They have a list of components, sources for those components, a CNC Lexan case design, a 3D printable case design, and the design files for the PCB. All of these components are available for purchase from various suppliers, and some suppliers have complete kits. I'm going to record a series of videos which will demonstrate the complete assembly process. I also plan to record a video where I discuss the history of the keyboard, uh, not the ErgoDox specifically, but the keyboard in general, and the benefits of the ErgoDox and why you might want to consider switching to the Dvorak or Colmac layouts. You can go to my channel to find the video. If I haven't uploaded it yet, subscribe to my channel, and then when I do upload it, you'll get notified. In this video, I just want to go over the components used in this project. This is the case I chose to use for the ErgoDox. I downloaded the Lexan case design and I modified it. You can download my modified version from my website. Look for the link to my website in the description of this video. I printed this with a uh, RepRap Prusa i2 with an 8 inch PCB heat bed. These are 3 millimeter holes and I'm using M3 25 millimeter bolts and M3 nuts to uh, sandwich these case components together. You might want to consider using M2.5 bolts for your project because I had to drill these holes to three and a half millimeters in order for these bolts to fit well. But also if you go with a Lexan case or another case design, you might need different bolts. So um, perhaps decide on your bolts when you decide on which case you're going to use. I plan to use these rubber feet for the bottom of the case so it doesn't slide around on my desk. However, I might make an aluminum mounting plate so I can actually attach this to my desk chair. Uh, the two PCBs are actually the same board, but they behave differently when the components are soldered to the top side and bottom side. This becomes the left and this becomes the right. Pretty clever. The two halves of the keyboard are connected with TRRS connectors, two of those, and a TRRS cable. The right side of the keyboard will connect to the computer with a mini USB connector and a mini USB cable. The keyboard is controlled by a Teensy USB board and an I.O. expander. You'll need a 0.1 UF ceramic capacitor, 2.2K resistors, 220 ohm resistors, and the specification calls for LEDs. However, I'm going to try building mine without them for now. I might have to solder them in later. Um, you'll also need about 80 diodes. You can use through-hole diodes or surface mount diodes like these. This keyboard uses Cherry MX switches and I decided to use the Browns. The Browns have the lightest pressure. You can choose keys with uh, more pressure and or tactile feedback. I recommend that you purchase a set of keycaps that are packaged specifically for the ErgoDox because the ErgoDox uses a lot of one and a half size keys and the keyboard layout is pretty unique. You may also want to consider printing your own keys. However, the tops of the keys would be flat instead of concave like these. That covers all the components used in this project. In the next video, I'm going to solder the diodes and I'll try to get a good angle for you so you can see how I do it. This is my first mechanical keyboard and I can't wait to finish this project. I hope you enjoy it too. Thanks for watching.